Thanks for joining me this morning for this important video. Beverages in hand. This morning is Colombian uh, coffee from apparently from somewhere in the mountains uh, of uh, Colombia. I'm not entirely sure. I don't really care, but it's always better when we drink together. I was at El Ranchero restaurant a few weeks ago and there was a big guy there. And when I say big, we're talking about five foot 10, maybe 450, 475. He had the, the exercise ball midsection going on. And you could tell from his legs, he had sores and a lot of fluid retention. And I heard him mention to the guy next to him that he was having to go on diabetic, uh, insulin shots because his oral medication wasn't working anymore. And I don't normally go up to people and just interject myself and, you know, start talking to them when they're eating. But as I was winding up my dinner, I went over to him and I introduced myself and I was glad I did. I told him about who I was and uh, to my surprise, he called me uh, just a couple days ago and found that his A1C of 12.5 uh, was, you know, his postprandial blood glucose, which was around 415, 405 after a meal, was now down to 165. That was two weeks of OMAD that I, I introduced him to and got him doing. But what made this video actually come to you today was what he said to me at the table when he was sitting there. Uh, and he almost didn't go through with it. He said, Joe, I really love my Dr. Pepper. I said, no problem switch over to diet. And he had a confused look on his face. And he said, I thought diet makes you fatter and gets an insulin response. And my heart just sank. And I had to explain to him that that's not true. Now, what angers me about that is that diet sodas, they're not good for you and you don't need them if you're, if you're not addicted to them. But if you are coming from, like myself, as, from a background who loves Dr. Pepper, I've had it all these years. If you have someone giving you misinformation, uh, and a lot of these people online, what you will hear is that diet sodas are bad because they cause an, your body interprets them as sugar, which is false. Uh, this is this individual didn't know for years. This man didn't know for years. By the way, he was my age, probably a couple years older, and he was about to lose. He could have potentially lost one of his legs. Hopefully he'll keep going and he'll keep succeeding. But it's misinformation like that that can cost someone the journey. I have one of my cardinal rules in one of the earliest videos I did on this channel. Dieting is a lesser of evils business. It is a lesser of evils business. So having something like a diet drink is better than having sugar. It does not get an insulin response and you will lose weight on it. I'm living proof of that. Others are living proof of that. But it seems not to matter. Because you have people with MD behind their name who are telling people otherwise and groupthink is taking over. And that's what this video is about. Uh, the, the dangers of your own experiences versus groupthink. Now, a lot of people criticize my channel because they, they get mad sometimes that I don't post studies on things. And the reason I don't post studies like most fitness YouTubers do is because take your pick. I can pick a study right now that says that uh, cholesterol levels are not changed by eating things like beef. Or I can pick from many that say that it is. You can always find evidence on either side of an issue. And for this reason, Martin Luther said, that the Swiss reformer Martin Luther said, uh, reason is the devil's whore. It can prove anything you want it to prove. And of course, this is true. Uh, what I'm asking you to do is to be back in touch with your body. And there's so many good reasons for why. A lot of people accuse me and others of using anecdotal evidence, evidence that just sounds good to one or a few people. But ultimately, that's really the highest standard of proof. If you listen to your body, you will be much more informed than if you listen to a doctor or a nutritionist who's invariably going to, going to tell you wrong. This is what I ran into years ago as a, I used to be a missionary and back in the days when I believed that truth was revealed in a book, I would go to a house and I would find that someone in this house 
would uh, believe that Jesus and uh, Satan were brothers from the planet Kola. So I had to take all of my time and try to refute that idea before I could lay down what I believed and present what I believed. Well, that's the way it is with dieters. Some of you are chronic dieters. Some people consult with me and they are just chronic dieters. They've been taught so many different things. They've been taught that lectins are bad. They've been taught that uh, you should drink eight glasses of water a day. They should, they've been taught you need to get fish oil and coenzyme Q10. And there's so many different competing ideas that it's very hard to get any traction. And so sometimes it's better if you're just a bit like this guy in the in El Ranchero restaurant, you're just a big smoking guy who eats four times a day and eats anything you want because he listened to me. So this guy actually called me, like I said, and he told me the good news. And his name is Mike. It's better if you're in a position where you can hear things and receive them versus you're going to just argue with them. And you're just going to protest and uh, decide that uh, that you should you should stick with the safe pass. And then, of course, look at it. Look at today with the face mask situations. Um, it is so sad to go in public and see these little children with face masks on. And uh, of course, you see the, this the same people driving down the road with uh, their a mask on. It's it's their own car. It's their own damn car, and they're driving down with a mask on. Of course, uh, the face mask thing, it doesn't, a mask is not going to hurt you, and a mask is could help you if you're in a crowd and you're worried about getting spit on someone when you're talking close to them, but that's all. If you really want the truth on masks, look up Dr. Simone Gold. Dr. Simone Gold, that is, I believe, the truth. Now, speaking of truth, I see around corners. This does not mean I am never wrong or can't be wrong, but it does mean I see trends. And that's why you probably subscribe to this channel, because I don't tell you all the stuff that the fads that go around on all of the popular YouTubers. They love to present fads and go over the latest studies. And they, for just like with the diet soda thing, they forget about everything and everyone who ever lost weight before 2014. They just go all the way back and they say, oh, it's not, you're just going to gain weight. And, and they spread misinformation. And uh, this is a problem today. And you have stuff like third-hand smoke. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. There's actually a thing called third-hand smoke where parents are getting together saying, if an uncle or a granddad hands uh, each other a coat and that coat has been worn by someone who smoked in it, then that could hurt a child's lungs. This is what's called creating boogeymen. Just like with the COVID thing, this is creating boogeymen. It is creating fear because some of you are just good observers. And by good observers, I mean like a good liberal or a good Democrat. You follow straight line, straight ticket, the ideas that are presented to you. And you do that because you want to feel safe. That's completely understandable. You wear the face mask. You go through. Some of you even put the shield on and walk around out in public like everyone is a, is a leper. I mean, it, it's the saddest thing today. Now, I, I wear a face mask if, if I'm in public because I don't want to have the conversation every time of why it's unconstitutional to enforce that, or I, I don't want to go that route. So it's easier just to wear one and then take it off when I decide I want to. But the point is, you will never find the truth following demagoguery, following um, the establishment, following modern nutritional advice, because you're always going to get people like uh, Dr. Gundry. Now, a, a couple contacted me yesterday or a couple days ago about Dr. Stephen Gundry. He's one of these people who promotes lectins. He's saying the real secret to weight loss is no lectins. That means no tomatoes. Basically, th this couple had been reading and binge watching his videos and w was convinced he was correct. And it took a 35 minute conversation to explain that, like all other exclusive diets, you can't stay on a diet like that because there's nothing you can have except blueberries and meat and a couple of other things. So when you want uh, anything with bread in it or any kind, oh, forget that. You can't do it because uh, bread, any type of wheat, anything like that, it, you, can't, you can't have it because that's lectins. And of course, rather than just admit that people have been eating too much and that's why they got overweight, Gundry goes around spreading the idea that it's actually your body's reaction to the anti-nutrients in there. And that's another big thing today, anti-nutrients. It, it's another boogeyman. 
uh, fish oil, which I mentioned. And, and I had a guy come to me three years ago, panicked, that we would all be going around as a bunch of Alzheimer's zombies if we didn't get this fish oil. Because he, he was a true believer. Folks, true believers are dangerous. They're dangerous because in with good intentions, they believe what is taught to them. And, uh, and I'll give you an example of where this came into, into play um, in the legal world. I have a, a younger cousin, and this cousin uh, applied to be a Border Patrol agent. He's a young, strong guy and is very optimistic about his careers. He failed the polygraph, which is something that a lot of people do. People think that if you're just honest, you'll pass a polygraph. For those of you who've never worked in the government, that's not true. Most people fail them, and they're, they're not admissible in court because they're usually not accurate. But the lady who administered the test was a true believer. She believed that if that says you're lying, then you're lying. And so she, he passed all the other tests with flying colors, physicals, everything, healthy, young, strong, no, no, uh, no dirt online. There was no other reason they wanted to get rid of him. She wrote one letter and he was out of the running because she was a true believer. A true believer, be it a religious person, be it a diet person, whatever you're a true believer in makes you dangerous. If you are a person who gets sold on an idea because a medical authority says it, I pity you as a human being. Now, I'm not saying that doctors are bad. I'm not saying you should go. I'm not telling you to commit civil disobedience. I'm not telling you to not take your meds. I'm, I'm not saying you're bad if you've, if you've gone to a doctor and taken meds. But I'm saying if you're one of these parents who puts your kid on Ritalin because he shows any masculine tendencies, because he's wild, if you're one of these people that just jumps to labels like OCD and... Uh, peanut allergies, and you're ready to just attribute and lay down and worship at the altar of, of uh, it's an addiction or a disease or a condition, you're hopeless. And I hope this video stabs against this groupthink, this orthodoxy. Five years ago, I made the term popular, OMAD popular on the internet. And since then, everybody's slowly come around. When I first uh, presented uh, on YouTube, I got, I don't get that many haters anymore, but I got haters and they would say, no, that's going to ruin your blood sugar. That's going to slow down your metabolism. They used all the same rhetoric that occasionally a, a small few still believe, but it was much more popular. Now, today, even Eric Berg and all of these others, they've switched to one meal a day and recommending it. And they're, they're recommending it. What changed? They can't see around corners. Neither can many of you. That's why you subscribe to every latest science journal that comes out. Somebody in Japan did a study on rats and one meal a day and concluded that you will develop insulin resistance if you eat one meal a day. I don't care about a rat study. I know that that doesn't apply to humans. Look at how many people that have lost weight because of this channel. They know that's not true, but it won't stop people from emailing me who are scared of the studies. They're scared of the COVID-19 terror tales of people supposedly dying everywhere of this. They'll always be believers because it's in them to conform and it scares them to step outside of, of confines. Peanuts. Peanuts have acrylamide. And I, I get articles. Some of you guys just send me articles. You know who you are. You just send me a bunch of silly articles about alarmist stuff that appears on like WebMD or something. A, a peanuts have acrylamide, and that's akin to frying in oil, which is bad for you. So let's don't eat peanuts. What's another one? Uh, raisins and anti-estrogens. You should not have estrogenic foods because that will make you grow breasts. Never mind that you would have to eat like three truckloads of raisins to grow breasts, but that's let's conveniently leave that out. Do you see the problem here? This is another green coffee bean extract. Remember the green coffee bean extract? Ten years ago, Furman and all of these people were promoting supplements, more worthless supplements that were not doing anything. Where do, why don't you hear about them today? Because they've run their course and people have gotten wise to them. That's how politic, politics are. That's how uh, beliefs are. 
Uh, there were Go back and, and look at history. Look in the 1800s. Look at the great revivals. Religion came in full swing in the 1830s, and you had the Campbellite movement. You had the Ellen G. White movement. You had all these big tent revivals, and they lasted, and that gave way to the science movement in the 1890s. You had people like the Flat Earthers and everybody debating, well, that's coming back now. You have a lot of, all of the truth is cyclical, and ignorance is cyclical. Right now, we're in a very paranoid uh, political time because everybody finds that it's it's cool to be woke. So it's just another style. It's like your kid, your your fourteen year old daughter coming home and saying, you know, with the, wanting to put the black lipstick on like all of her friends. Uh, you know, be cool, be goth, and th that's all this is, folks. If you are married to an ideology, you're a dangerous person. If you believe in something so strongly that you believe that everybody has to do that or they're a devil, they're, they're, they're next, they're worthless. You are the problem. And that's why you're always going to be driven with the wind and tossed with all the latest silly ideas out there. You're, you're a slave to them because you can't see past what someone says. I'm not asking you to believe everything I say. If you're a normal person and you watch this channel, you agree with maybe 88, 85% of what I say. Uh, I don't expect you to agree with everything I say, but you should see this point clearly. I have the ability to see this way ahead of time. It, all fads, all pills, all of this stuff. By the way, the only supplement that works is a liquid drop. That's why I only use those now, except for maybe BCAAs to get some protein. I do use those. But the rest of that, it's, it's not doing anything for you. And it doesn't matter what advertisement you hear, I know that it's always, it's just like those uh, dethroned prince emails you get in your junk email sort of things. They come and they say, uh, uh, you know, I'm a dethroned prince. I want to deposit money. Those still get people. They still end up scamming people saying, you know, saying that they'll share their wealth with you. And you, you wonder who falls for this stuff. The answer is everybody. Everybody falls for this stuff at some point. The role of sugar. Nothing has taken a bigger beating than sugar. If you look at my meals, and I'm about to have a series of videos coming on my meals for the last two months. Um, stick around for that. But sugar's not a bad thing. It just, you use it like you do a caplet on a pill. If, you, if you've ever taken any t sort of a, of a vitamin gummy or anything like that, it has sugar, makes it taste real good. It goes down, it's about, less, it's about 15 calories. If you use sugar tactically, you can use it to get down everything that you do. I use sugar. I sprinkle it on fruits that are too uh, tart for me so that I, I, it tastes good. I want to eat it. That's all it is. It's not going to hurt you. If you have a normal tolerance, especially if you're fasting and you're spending 18 to 23 hours per day in a fasted state, getting sugar at a meal is not going to hurt you. But it's too easy to create a boogeyman. That's why this video is important. It is too easy to scapegoat and create something evil and say sugar is the problem or carbs are the problem or grains are the problem. No, it's lectin. So it's, uh, it's uh, gluten, another movement that very few people actually have an allergy to. So going back to Mike, our guy we started with, where would he have been had he run into these uh, true believer health Nazi types? You got to quit everything. You got to get rid of bread. You got to get rid of sweets. You got to get rid of everything, and you've got to exercise, and you've got to walk five miles a day. How can you take someone who's needs attention and then just bombaste them with uh, all sorts of obligations, so-called obligations? Reconnect with you. The one thing that cannot be a fad is your desire for self-mastery. 